talk about the paper and your ideas. Is it, is that we, do we have a chance to recreate or reinvigorate European solidarity? Yes, well, the paper uh, has a title which is uh, Solidarity 2.0. And uh, it is dedicated to um, proposals for the future cohesion policy. So it means the regional development European policy. And, uh, uh, well, of course, this policy is 30 years old. And it has to be revealed really great because uh, well, its uh, efficiency uh, comes from the, its ability to... Uh, give the opportunity for European citizens, but also for regions, for the places where they live, uh, to cope with the new challenges. And these new challenges uh, are sometimes different because obviously uh, all the places are not fitted for uh, being able to cope with these challenges like uh, globalization, but also global warming and migration. But at the same time, uh, there are, even in regions, many new uh, disparities at local level between rural, rural areas and cities. And uh, depending on where you are, you have different civil service, of different quality, which is probably the, the, the most important. And so uh, I should say is that solidarity will come back and legitimacy of the EU will come back uh, when people will have the feeling that they are uh, really taken into account and their new situation is taken into account by the EU level. So uh, it means First, we need to assess these challenges, understand where the most vulnerable regions are, and especially it is not just a question of GDP per capita, it is also a question of uh, other risk and other vulnerabilities. And then uh, we shall have probably to change a bit the objectives not only uh, competitiveness, even if it can be widened, competitiveness now it's not just a question of production, of growth, but it is also a question of uh, uh, environmental conditions, it's of amenities, of cultural life, of energy savings, uh, of social cohesion, of course. Sure, sure. And, uh, but more than that, maybe the question currently is resilience. Uh, how different regions which have different assets can really be resilient just to be able by, for, for food, for agriculture, but also for transport, for health, etc., able to provide uh, their uh, citizens good condition of living and maybe just then wealth and revenues and better conditions. One of the big issues will be how much money. But depending on, but if we put it aside, uh, the question is uh, for them really to revigorate this cohesion policy. And uh, they, they are aware that uh, we cannot go still with this idea of, would say, uh, conver only convergence. Convergence is something, it's important for the catching up regions, but at the same time, internal cohesion in the, in the regions and this idea of a mix of different policies to be resilient towards these new challenges is important. Creating new conditions for showing solidarity uh, adapted to the new challenges is something that is interesting for them because it's not just a question of money, it's also a question of rearranging the policies. Not so many years ago, we had many more hopes concerning the EU's advancement. Mm -hmm. Stuart, you were one of those who, in the late 80s, early 90s who were <coughs> participating in, in framing um, and, and uh, developing new ideas. But what happened to those values? What happened to these wonderful ideas? And one of the main arguments I made was that uh, you never would get cohesion 
in the Europe as it already was by fiscal transfers, tax transfers between member states. And so the main argument I made was that Europe needed to model cohesion on the American New Deal. And Roosevelt fu funded the American New Deal, which reduced unemployment in the states from 22% to 8% in seven years uh, by bonds, shifting savings into investment. And so I recommended the bonds, and in a white paper of uh, December 1993, which has become known as the Delaw White Paper, uh, it set employment targets, which I had drawn together with the team, the econometric team, to create 15 million jobs. And registered unemployment at the time was about 17 million. So this was, this was f nearly full employment. Yeah. But uh, we don't have these bonds. And, I know that. And Madam Merkel, for example, has said in 2012, they will be introduced over my dead body. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the rest of Europe, I mean, much of the rest of Europe is dying uh, because she doesn't under, even understand what a bond is. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a lot of debate how to make things, how to change things, how to make decision making more efficient on the European level. And somehow everything is going in, in the different, in the opposite direction. It was quite obvious after 89, 91, that if the East European countries are going to join the European integration, and they all declared that, you know, that was clear, that, that, um, that diversity will be um, increasing and cohesion, to create cohesion will be much more difficult. And it doesn't seem to me that there, that was enough, enough reaction to this from the core countries so to, to, to change the methods of integration. You know? Yeah, I think that, well, the, as regards the, the first step just after enlargement, so in mm. 2004, it was obvious that the easy remedy, the easy way to, to, to achieve uh, catching up uh, was uh, to continue on the same line with regional development, to uh, giving money, so it's uh, well, giving more money to the uh, least developed or the less rich regions yes. and invest a lot on infrastructure because of the need for a sewage system, for transport, mm -hmm. renewing system and all this stuff. However, the question currently is that uh, we have now reached a level which is enough satisfactory, but if we want really uh, to maintain cohesion, people have to be involved and people mm. have to think that, well, they are part of a contract. Yes. And this contract yes. is, well, they are well of regions <laughs> of countries that pay for uh, this solidarity, but on the other side, the others are responsible of well, to some conditions. So the conditions are first, well, we have programs for developing and increasing our GDP per capita, but at the same time, we are okay for implementing mm -hmm. uh, many regulations that help the things. And I'm thinking, for example, on regulation on the environment, because we are far from that. I mean, many countries or regions are not implementing as they should. There are other things as regards social issues where regulation should be uh, first implemented, then well, followed. Ever since we are getting fur far and further and further away mm. from a European uh, social contract, so how do you think that after um, this big bank, Eastern enlargement, and some other Eastern European countries joining the EU and promising another three or four uh, countries from Western Balkans to join the EU, that means that that diversity is, is, is increasing and increasing. What are the chances? So what, is, in, in other words, where does your hope lie for a new European social contract? So what should well, you do? My, my hope is that, uh, is linked to the fact that we are more than less finishing with this neoliberal uh, ideology. Uh, after 30 years, just saying less public intervention, less public regulation, all this stuff. The welfare state was created uh, really focusing on the risk 
linked to a gain and labor and, uh, and poverty. Then if we are thinking that now another kind of risk comes from health linked to environment, the, uh, the, the way that we are living and the fact that the statistics are obvious. If you are poor, your conditions of living are worst, especially as regards the environment. And so, in fact, there are needs for investment. There are needs for uh, changing regulation, for uh, also making uh, houses more safe, uh, uh, also medicines and all this stuff linked to the fact that environment environmental issues on a on large scale, are, it's possible to identify where are the risk, to quantify the risk, and so it means that it's possible probably to settle a new kind of new deal, a new welfare state that could be not only for welfare, social, yes, yes. Eh, but also for environment. Mm -hmm. And I think that it is something that is interesting to think as a, a kind of reverse inter intergenerational uh -huh. um, uh, solidarity, not only for the elderly people, but also for the generation coming. And uh, that's something that can be, <coughs> well, implemented not yeah. today, neither tomorrow. We have a problem between the European Union, and uh, namely the nation states, mm -hmm. strengthening their, whatever, ideology, their imagined or existing sovereignty, and there is a good reason for that. We had in the 90s, early 90s, mid 90s, more hope for creating what we call a supranational polity, if you want, demos, um, NGOs, civil society, and these hopes are completely vanished today. Mm -hmm. And there was a time when the Commission was producing white papers and talking about, uh, actually in my understanding, non-existing European civil society. But if member states are getting stronger, that means nation states are getting stronger, hmm? mm -hmm. uh, which is actually happening. And there is more bilateralism within the European Union, as started with, I agree, with Stuart Angela Merkel, uh, then I don't <coughs> see how cohesion on the European level, on the supranational level, is going to be effective. If the EU, as a set of institutions, a new polity, would be able to act as a welfare state without becoming one government, then, then yes. If not, I think the centrifugal um, forces, namely the nation state, might might undermine the entire European construction. I don't know how, how do you see this, Stuart? I don't agree with you that nation states are becoming stronger. One nation state is becoming stronger, the others are weaker. Uh, you saw that in the, you know, the Euro group. The Euro group is the group of finance ministers for the Eurozone area. It has no basis in any treaty. It has no constitutional basis. It takes no minutes. It publishes, therefore, no minutes. It reports to no democratic elected body, and it insisted that, for example, the, the program of Syriza in Greece could not be implemented, but it would not discuss it. Now, one of the arguments in the Syriza program put by myself and Yanis Varoufakis was precisely Eurobonds, that these bonds don't count on national debt, they're equivalent to US Treasury bonds, they could fund a European New Deal, and the German taxpayers would not have to pay, and Germany would not have to guarantee it. And Schauble and Dijsselbloem of uh, the Netherlands refused even to discuss it. And then, when Varoufakis was continuing to make the argument, they conspired. On a Thursday, they decided that they would all state uh, that Varoufakis was an academic economist and had no real understanding of politics, though I, I was in politics in the 60s when Schauble was a student, uh, had no real understanding of politics and discredited him and refused to talk to him anymore. There's no democracy at that level. And for example, Sapin, French finance minister, tried to support Varoufakis and Schauble said, 
you can't talk. France needs a Troika. And uh, Sapin stood up, there was a shouting match. One of the interesting things now is Macron. Because Macron is one of the few people who does actually understand the Delors case, including the fact that the European Investment Bank is very project financed, but we need a global role for Europe. We need to recycle global surpluses. And it was for that that I designed something called the European Investment Fund, which Delors got the European Council to introduce. And uh, Macron is one of the few people in Europe who understands this. And when he was industry minister, uh, he took on Schaubler on that. And Schaubler said, uh, we, need, we, we, we need to expand the role of the European Investment Fund. And Schaubler was against. But at that stage, Macron was only industry minister. Now he's president of France. And it will be interesting yeah. to see what happens. Marjorie. Now, yeah. oh, oh, I, I completely agree with you as regards this question of uh, globalization, external trade, uh, the, the well uh, knowledge of Macron as regards economics. Mm. And that's very helpful. And I think that what can be helpful is that it is not in a position of being afraid of what happens yes. elsewhere, outside, in, in, in the world. But really thinking that we have First, and that's currently the case, uh, he has a, a big speech as regards France assets, as regards uh, its economy and possibility just to develop uh, uh, new investment and just making trades, etc. But at the same time, I think that in his mind, it can really be European. Mm. And so, of course, what, what is really nice for people working on European issues. That's now for 20 years that we haven't had any optimistic, uh, mm -hmm. in France, optimistic uh, speech as regards the European issues, the fact that our horizon is European. It's not something for mm -hmm. just the states. And uh, well, so I, I think, well, just to come back to this uh, question of transformation of the welfare, welfare state, state and okay. uh, 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 environmental welfare state, I think that we have very different situation mm -hmm. uh, as regards the welfare offered provided by the, the different member states. Yes. And so, in fact, you, well, you, you, you should have to imagine how this kind of ideas can be conceived at European level, the role that should be uh, occupied by the national level, but also at local level. Because all this stuff is something <coughs> that cannot really uh, exist if there is no multi-level mm. arrangements and saying that there are different roles, etc. And, and, and I think that if, well, currently, if Europe if the EU really is positive about its role in the world, mm -hmm. it can help. Well, if you want to, if I comment yes. on Brexit, yeah. uh, being after all by nationality British, uh, the Brexit vote was not a nationalist vote, uh -huh. the, the, the leave vote. It was that Europe was too alien, too far away, and not in direct enough touch uh, with people's local needs. And I think, for example, uh, whether it's welfare state or a welfare society, uh, two measures which could reinforce support for Europe would be a common minimum wage mm -hmm. and a common basic pension. Mm -hmm. Now, this can easily be afforded if there's a European recovery, uh -huh. such as e even That's half the scale that Roosevelt achieved during the yeah. New Deal, because he established minimum wages both as a social right and to raise demand. And he funded pensions, and he got re-elected four One times. Dr. Erhard Buzek, who is a frequent visitor of uh, our institute here, um, he made some comments on, on your paper. Unfortunately, he cannot be here, but he mentioned, as I did actually, the importance of education and culture. Mm -hmm. Both elements are pretty much missing from the, the real European agenda, not the, the political philosophy, mentioned many times, but from the real one. Do you see any, any, any progress, any hope for progress? Because European identities would be never constructed, never 
Yes, but the, 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 the initial, the intrinsic problem of, of, of the EU is that it is a trade and economic construction. Yeah. And it is still very weak as regards culture, as regards the, uh, its, well, it, it, the, the, its relationship with the academics, with the uh, intellectual world, yeah. in, and, and that's still a huge problem. I mean, it's currently th things are moving, uh, and the, the information, the data, the, uh, all these things are just uh, exchanged thanks to four big companies. Uh, in the world, and that's something which is but, but more than any upsetting. suggestions in the Jacques Delors Institute in Berlin and in Paris how to change it? Or Stuart, you have any any clue, any idea? Yes, get a recovery in Europe, get people back to jobs, reinforce their social rights actually with income, such as uh, a basic minimum wage and and, and a basic pension for all Europeans, then they will see that Europe is adding value, not just for companies, but for people. That's it. That's the final word.